What's up guys, I'm Tim from Can't Be True, and in this video, we're going to be exploring the world of urban legends. From ghost stories to mysterious creatures, these tales have been passed down through generations and have captivated audiences for centuries. But what are urban legends, and why do they continue to capture our imagination? Are they based on fact or fiction? And why do some persist while others fade away? Join us as we delve into the history and psychology behind 10 of the most intriguing and enduring urban legends. The Bunny Man In a small town nestled in the heart of Fairfax County, Virginia, a series of gruesome murders shook the community to its core. The residents lived in fear as the killer, known only as the Bunny Man, seemed to strike at will. The Bunny Man was said to be a man who had escaped from an asylum dressed in a bunny costume when he committed his crimes. He was known to wield an axe with which he brutally hacked his victims to pieces. The first murder occurred on a warm summer night as a young couple was returning home from a date. They were found the next morning, their bodies brutally mutilated and their screams still echoing through the deserted streets. As the days passed, more and more bodies were discovered, each murder more gruesome than the last. The residents of the small town were living in fear never venturing out alone at night. Just when it seemed as though the bunny man would never be caught, a local farmer discovered a network of underground tunnels beneath his property. Inside, the police found the remains of several victims as well as a bunny suit covered in blood. The bunny man was never found. Some say that he is still out there waiting for his next victims and that if you listen closely on a quiet night, you can still hear the screams of his victims echoing through the streets. Seven Gates of Hell In the small town of Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania, there is a legend of the Seven Gates of Hell. It was said that if one were brave enough to enter the gates, they would be faced with unimaginable terror and horrors. The Seven Gates are said to be in an abandoned coal mine deep in the woods on the outskirts of town. It is said that the mine was cursed and that anyone who entered would never return. Despite the warnings, a group of friends, curious and daring, decided to venture into the mine to see if the legend was true. They made their way through the first gate and immediately they felt a chill run down their spine. As they ventured deeper into the mine, they found themselves facing darker and darker tunnels, each one leading them closer to the heart of the mine. As they passed through the second gate, they heard strange noises coming from the darkness ahead. They quickly realized that they were not alone in the mine and that whatever was lurking in the shadows was not human. They pressed on, desperately trying to find a way out, but the closer they got to the seventh gate, the more terrifying the mine became. They saw twisted and mangled creatures lurking in the shadows and heard the screams of the damned. Finally, they reached the seventh gate and realized that there was no way out. They were trapped in the mine, forever doomed to wander the seven gates of hell. The legend of the seven gates of hell in Mount Pleasant, Pennsylvania still lives on, and to this day, no one knows what truly lies behind those gates. But one thing is certain, those who dare to enter the mine will never return. The Wendigo Once upon a time, in a remote snowy forest, a group of hunters set out to track and hunt a large deer that they had been tracking for days. As the day went on, the weather turned for the worse and the hunters found themselves lost in the blizzard. Desperate for shelter, they stumbled upon an old abandoned cabin deep in the woods. They decided to spend the night there, hoping to wait out the storm. As they settled in for the night, strange noises began to echo through the cabin. The hunters dismissed it as the wind, but as the night went on, the noises grew louder and more frantic. In the middle of the night, one of the hunters woke up to a terrifying sight. Standing at the foot of his bed was a figure, emaciated and twisted, with eyes that glowed with an otherworldly hunger. The hunter tried to scream, but no sound came out as he felt a cold hand wrap around his throat. The others woke to the commotion and found the hunter, paralyzed with fear, pointing at the figure. 
They realized too late that they had stumbled upon the lair of a Wendigo, a creature from Native American legend that is said to be a spirit that possesses and devours human flesh. The Wendigo, driven mad by starvation and the cold, attacked the hunters one by one, dragging them out to the snow to be devoured. The remaining hunters, realizing they could not defeat the Wendigo, fled into the night, leaving behind the cabin and the spirits of their fallen comrades. They vowed never to speak of the Wendigo again, but the memory of that terrifying night stayed with them forever. From that day on, the cabin was avoided by all who knew of it, and the Wendigo continued to roam the snowy forest. The Rake The Rake is an urban legend that originated on internet forums in the early 2000s. According to the legend, the Rake is a creature that appears as a tall, hairless humanoid with elongated limbs and fingers. It is said to have a gaunt, emaciated appearance and its face is often described as having a blank, expressionless gaze. The creature is said to stalk its victims and attack them in their sleep, leaving them with deep scratches and bite marks. The rake is said to have been first sighted in the early 17th century in the northeastern region of the United States, and it has been reported to have been seen in different locations across the world, yet it is mostly reported in the United States and Europe. The origins of the rake are unclear, but it is believed to have been created as a creepypasta or an internet horror story that was spread through online forums and message boards. The story gained widespread attention and eventually became an urban legend. In recent years, the rake has been adapted into various forms of media, including books, movies, and video games. The legend has also inspired many real-life sightings and encounters with people claiming to have seen the creature in the woods or in their homes. The Char Man The Char Man is an urban legend that is said to haunt San Antonio Creek in Southern California. According to the legend, the Char Man is a ghostly figure that is said to have been burned in a forest fire that occurred in the area many years ago. The legend goes that the man was a vagrant who was living in the woods and was unable to escape the fire that swept through the area. His body was burned beyond recognition, and his remains were buried in an unmarked grave. Since then, many people have reported seeing a ghostly figure with charred skin and clothes wandering along the creek. Some say that the char man is searching for his lost belongings, which were burned in the fire. Others say that he is seeking revenge on those who did not try to help him during the fire. Many people report strange occurrences, such as hearing strange noises, feeling an eerie presence, or even seeing the ghostly figure when they visit the creek. The Charman is said to be a very aggressive spirit, and visitors to the area are warned to be careful and respectful when visiting the creek. The Dark Watchers the Dark Watchers are an urban legend that originates from the Central Coast region of California, specifically from the Santa Lucia Mountains. According to the legend, the Dark Watchers are mysterious shadowy figures that are said to be seen standing on mountaintops, cliffs, and ridges, staring down at those who pass by. They are said to be tall, ominous figures that are always dressed in dark clothing and hoods and have been described as having a sinister or malevolent presence. The origins of the Dark Watchers are not well known, but they are said to be a part of the Chumash Native American folklore. According to the Chumash, the Dark Watchers were powerful spirits that guarded the mountain passes and were said to be the protectors of the natural world. They were also believed to be omens of bad luck and death and were said to bring misfortune to those who saw them. The Dark Watchers have been reported by hikers, campers, and other visitors to the Santa Lucia Mountains for many years, but their existence is considered a legend and has not been proven. Some people say that the Dark Watchers are a natural phenomenon caused by the fog and mist that often covers the mountains, while others argue that they are a part of local folklore and should be respected as such. The Night Marchers The Night Marchers are an urban legend from Hawaiian folklore that tells the story of ancient Hawaiian warriors who march at night through the land that they once fought to protect. 
According to the legend, the Night Marchers are the spirits of warriors who died in battle and are believed to be on a journey to the afterlife. They are said to be seen and heard marching in single file, carrying weapons and sometimes torches, accompanied by the sounds of drums and conch shells. The Night Marchers are said to march through the land they once protected and are believed to be on a mission to ensure that the land remains sacred and protected. They are led by a chief or king and march in a specific order, with the chief leading the way, followed by the warriors and then the women and children as they march through the land, visiting sacred places and ancient burial sites on their journey to the afterlife. The night marchers are considered to be sacred and powerful spirits, and it is said that if one sees them or hears their drums, they must remain still and silent or risk being harmed by the spirits. It is also said that if a person is caught in the path of the night marchers, they must lie down and pretend to be dead. Otherwise, the night marchers will see them as a threat and attack them. The Maryland Goat Man The small town of Beltsville, Maryland was known for its quiet streets and peaceful countryside. But there was one thing that the townspeople feared more than anything else, the Goat Man. It all started with a scientist who worked at the Beltsville Agricultural Research Center. He was a brilliant man who was fascinated by the idea of combining the DNA of different species to create new and unique organisms. He spent years conducting experiments in secret, always pushing the boundaries of what was possible. One day, he decided to conduct the ultimate experiment. He wanted to combine the DNA of a goat with that of a human. He believed that this would create a creature that was strong, fast, and intelligent, the perfect creature for farming and labor. But things went horribly wrong, and the scientist was transformed into a monstrous creature. The creature that emerged from the lab had the heads and horns of a goat, the body of a man, and the hooves of a goat. It was strong, fast, and very aggressive. It broke out of the lab and fled into the woods surrounding the research center. The creature, known as the Goat Man, began to roam the forests and back roads of Maryland, attacking cars and people with an axe or a pickaxe that it carried. The townspeople were terrified, and many of them reported seeing the creature lurking in the shadows, watching them from a distance. The legend of the Goat Man caused such a stir that the USDA had to formally deny any involvement in creating the Goat Man in their Beltsville Research Agricultural Center. But the legend lives on, and the people of Beltsville never forget the Goat Man and always keep an eye out for him in the woods. Cropsy In the small town of Staten Island, there is a legend of a boogeyman-like figure known as Cropsy. The legend began in the 1970s and 1980s, when several children went missing in the area. The community was gripped by fear, and rumors began to spread that a mysterious figure known as Cropsy was responsible for the disappearances. According to legend, Cropsy was a former patient of the Willowbrook State School, a now-closed institution for people with developmental disabilities. It was said that he had escaped from the school and was living in the abandoned buildings and tunnels in the nearby woods, where he would kidnap and kill local children. Some people claimed to have seen Cropsy in the woods, describing him as a disfigured or deformed figure, while others said that he was a normal-looking man with a strange or menacing demeanor. Parents warned their children to stay away from the woods, and many people avoided the area altogether. Despite the efforts of the police, the missing children were never found, and the legend of Cropsy continued to spread. As time went by, the true identity of Cropsy was believed to be a real-life individual named Andre Rand, who was convicted of kidnapping and is suspected of other crimes. However, the legend of Cropsy lives on in the minds of the people of Staten Island, a reminder of the fear and uncertainty that once gripped the community. And to this day, some people claim to still see Cropsy lurking in the woods, searching for his next victim. The Death Ship on the Platte River in Wyoming, a legend persists that a ship of death continues to sail upon the sometimes dangerous waters. The phantom ship rises out of a strange mist 
that quickly becomes a massive rolling ball of fog. As the ship grows closer, witnesses report that its sails and masts are covered with frost. The crew, also covered with frost, stands upon its deck, huddled around a corpse lying in a canvas sheet. The legend continues that the ship always foreshadows the death of someone who will die on the day it is spotted. As the crew steps back, the corpse's identity is revealed as a person known by the witness. The first alleged sighting was made in 1862 by a trapper named Leon Weber. When the crew stepped back, the corpse revealed the body of Weber's fiancé, who died later that same day. Another sighting of the Phantom Ship was made by a cattleman, Gene Wilson, in 1887, when he saw his wife's body laid out on the canvas, she too would die later that day. In 1903, Victor Habe was chopping down a tree on his riverfront property when he spotted the ship from the shore. Laid out on the deck was the body of a close friend. Once again, later that day, the friend was killed in a tragic accident. Urban legends are a fascinating part of our cultural heritage. They often reflect our deepest fears, hopes, and anxieties, and can reveal much about the society in which they originated. I hope that this video has helped to shed some light on the history and psychology behind some of the most intriguing and enduring urban legends. If you have any personal encounters or evidence of an urban legend, please share them in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.